So, hello. Thank you much. So, <clears throat> yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, so, my name is Robert Vogel. I am a software developer at the Hallowell company. And today I'm here to uh, give you a quick introduction about a, an extension that we wrote some couple of, a uh, couple of, no, not a couple of years, a year ago, let's say. Um, it is a, the extension is called Workflows, and um, it is meant to um, support the user with, the, uh, with working on the content of Wiki um, to, to allow a creation of yeah, content workflows, of modifying content um, on the Wiki. And yeah, that's what I want to show you now. So first of all, um, I will, yeah, that's the agenda. I will give a, a quick overview of how it even came to uh, this extension. And I want to include two dem demos. One is a basic demo that you can basically um, uh, do on your own if you install the extension. And the other one is um, a custom one, a custom workflow, which you can also do on your own if you follow the, uh, the, tut the tutorial. So first of all, um, why did we even uh, create this extension? Um, a similar extension has been around for uh, lots of years already in the BlueSpice found in the BlueSpice distribution. Uh, BlueSpice is our media wiki fund uh, distribution. Um, this was uh, initially created um, uh, from a customer request who wanted to have a, a tool for doing reviews on uh, pages. So some user creates a page, some other user should review the page. Um, he may provide feedback. Some loop may be included in here where um, changes need to be, to, to be applied. And in the end, uh, this results in a, re a reviewed and approved version of a page. So back then, we had this uh, extension called BlueSpice Review. Um, it was a more or less very linear <coughs> thing. Um, it consisted of steps, one step after the other. A step could be assigned to a partic particular user, later um, even to groups, to user groups. Um, there were notifications involved like um, uh, users were notified about um, being uh, in charge of doing something. And obviously for auditing reasons, um, we kept some, some logs in the revision history about how such a process um, was completed. And in the end, um, yeah, some stable version of the page was created. We, we were not using um, approved refs here. We, are, we rely, relied on uh, flag drafts in this case, so this was also integrated. Now, over the time, over the years, this extension grew and grew and uh, got uh, more and more hard to modify and we had uh, some troubles to fulfill the, um, the customization requests from our customers. So we decided to move on and create something new, and that is um, the workflows extension. Yeah. Um, which I want to quickly show you. So I have set up a small um, media, media wiki installation here, uh, 139, um, only with the extensions enabled that are required. As you can see, this is not blue spice. Um, this is uh, just a regular media wiki. So let's check how such a, work, so, so such a workflow may uh, look like. I'm on some arbitrary page. There is a new content action um, assigned to that page. Actually, there are two new content actions. One is the uh, list of workflows, and the other one is the um, functionality to start the workflow. So if I start that workflow, you can see I can select from a list of workflows. The first two workflows that you see here, they are um, standard workflows. They are included in the extension already. So when, if you install this extension, you will get the first two of them. On BlueSpice, we actually have four of them um, because we have some uh, yeah, more sophisticated bundled with the, um, with the distribution, but the extension itself features those two. These are very simple, and I want to demonstrate this. I will pick the single user feedback. That's just basically asking somebody for feedback. So single user um, implies that we need to choose a user. We need to tell which user. You can see uh, a nice uh, dialogue with a form pops up where I can 
look the user up. It's an autocomplete field um, showing me all the users. This will also support real names, by the way. I can um, give uh, <coughs> some instructions. And then, in this case, um, I would want to give a, um, a I want to, want to have a, an email notification to some external address. You, could, you, can, you can set this up to be your user, for example, if you just wanted to get to, to your user um, account, or you can have it as an external email address. I have now used an external one because it's more simple to, to demonstrate. So um, I've selected myself here because I don't want to switch user context, but obviously this will work for other users as well. Once the workflow is started, you can see some banner appears um, at, at the top of the page where it's t just telling me that the workflow is running and that I need to do something. This is only visible to me as I am assigned to, that, um, to this workflow activity. I can complete that, I uh, can give us some re-feedback. And I can submit it. And that's it. The workflow is done. Super simple workflow. Let's quickly uh, check what's happened here. Um, there was just a mail sent out, which gives me some information like user feedback for page demo zero um, has finished, and there's some metadata on that. This is very generic stuff. Um, but the good news is you can really customize this uh, to a very large extent. Now. Let's go back to the slides here. <clears throat> so what are the main characteristics or features of the, this new extension? First of all, we wanted to rely on some um, standard um, for modeling a workflow. In this case, we decided for BPMN, which is not necessarily um, uh, required here, but it fits pretty well. It's an official standard. There's very good tooling. It allows for uh, extensibility. And um, many people already uh, know this standard, and it's, yeah, it's pretty much uh, recognized by people. So it was a, a good choice to model those workflows. Um, most important part for us was to really embrace MediaWiki. We didn't want to um, to just create some workflow engine that you need to do some coding on, or can do some coding on, but we, wa we wanted to allow as many um, media wiki functionality on that uh, workflow as possible. Um, so the most important part here, you can see it's, it's uh, printed in, in bold, it's support parser functions. Can I quickly ask who of you uh, is aware of parser functions? Just raise your hand. I think a lot of people. Yeah, good. Um, so the good news is you, this knowledge that you already have, you can reuse it on the workflow. <coughs> when, you, when you create a workflow, you can use parser functions in many places to influence the workflow. I will uh, show how this works in a minute. In addition, there is obviously a couple of other things like um, we integrate into Echo for notifications. So if you are assigned to, a, um, to some activity, you will be notified. Um, we interact heavily with the MediaWiki um, entities like users, groups, and pages. So you have, you have a user interface elements like pickers for those things um, that, you can, that you can use and facilitate. Um, the, acti the extension comes with a set of predefined activities. So in the BPNN world, well, it's either task or activity. You can more or less exchange that. Um, in this case, uh, I called it activities. Um, so each of those boxes, you can see up there, there's a such a diagram. Each of those boxes basically is some kind of an activity. And we have implemented a set of activities that ma should make it easy for everyone to implement whatever workflow is yeah, wanted. Um, here's the list. You can see there's user feedback, group feedback. That's basically the one. Um, uh, th that's the main part that we just showed. It will show a, a dialogue where a user can feed in some text, and it will then be passed on to the, to the workflow engine, so it can be reused later on. User vote, group vote, well, that's very similar, but it features also some toggle, where you can say yes or no, it has, a, it has an additional <coughs> switch. We can, we can send mails, what we've just seen. 
But there are even more things like we can um, request an edit. So basically, we can, we can tell a user, now in this activity, I ask you to modify some part of the page, and you then need to confirm that you have done this modification. And we can even um, do edits automatically as part of the workflow. That's the edit page um, activity, which I want to demonstrate in a couple of minutes. And um, last but not least, we have the um, set template params, which um, I think is very uh, valuable in the context of semantic media wiki, because lots of things are happening through templates. So um, the workflow is capable of modifying a page content and setting uh, a, uh, yeah, setting a, a value on a template in a page, doing an edit, basically. Um, on the other column, you can see there are additional um, activities which are not part of the uh, extension right away. They are uh, integrated by other extensions. I've listed them here. <coughs> so there's a way to check out and check in pages to, yeah, to disallow editing while a workflow runs, for example. There's also a way to approve, uh, to create approved um, revisions. Um, in this case, this is, it's the extension content stabilization, which is some kind of a um, uh, drop-in replacement for flag drafts, because we had the, we we needed to implement something on their own after um, the foundation decided to change flag drafts in a very radical manner. And yeah, then there's also some set reminders. So, but you can see there's there are some. Um, some additional activities coming in from outside, and other extensions could provide their um, own extensions, quite, uh, their own activities, quite easily, so that they can be reused. In addition to that, um, there are so-called triggers. Um, well, obviously, a workflow needs to be started somehow, and the, the most uh, uh, easy way is to start it manually, just as I demonstrated it right now. So you click somewhere, you, cho you choose a workflow, and you start it. But there are other cases as well, like um, you want to start a workflow uh, immediately when something happens, like uh, an edit or a creation of a page. So you could use that for, um, for starting a QI process on some page that gets edited or created automatically. And there's also some um, time-based trigger where you can say, OK, when is some, some particular date or recurring um, date um, uh, comes in, then some workflow gets automatically triggered. This again is only part of BlueSpy, so it's an integration of another extension. It's not in uh, the main, uh, the basic fun uh, extension. Um, the extension is quite large. Um, it has a lot, lot, lot of code, and it also requires other extensions. That's, um, I think that's worth mentioning. I've listed the two uh, main requirements here. That's OJS Plus, which is also, it's a kind of a libra library extension that we've created, which features all those, um, those dialog elements that you, that you will see and that you have seen. For example, that user picker that you've just seen, that's coming from OJS Plus. And the forms extension that we have here, that's very, um, very close to that. It allows to define um, OJS Plus, uh, OJS forms using um, uh, wiki pages, which then again can be embedded in dialogues, just as you have, just, uh, as you have seen it. Uh, you can install this extension via Composer, and yeah, there's a tutorial available for how to customize it. And I don't want to do the whole um, tutorial here now, because that would just take too long, but I would want to show you the, the result of this tutorial and give you some <laughs> insights on how this works. So, let's move on. Um, here, let's go back to this page. Mm. Oh, wait. Maybe I need actually need to quickly show you that link. So you understand what what we're now going to do. So this is roughly what I'm going to show you now. 
it's a fictional workflow. It really doesn't make too much sense, but it should show off um, some, some core um, features of the tool. So we want to start, um, we want to start the, uh, uh, the workflow and pass in some information that we want to display to a user, some comment likes, uh, uh, for example. Then we want to ask um, some user for, to, to, class, to, to do a classification of content. In this case, we're just um, choosing between two options, a class A and a class B, which is super fictional. In case of class A, if the, uh, if the, uh, the user cho chose class A, we will just send out a mail and saying everything's cool. If we choose a class B, we will do an edit to a wiki page, to some other wiki page, not to the one that we are on, um, and then send a mail. So that's it. Because the, so this is, the, the, I think, the, the interesting part that really shows what you can do with the tool. So, um, let's investigate this. Oh, sorry, wrong. Um, so, I have created a, a page called classificationworkflow.bpmn which holds um, BPMN XML. This BPMN XML, um, unfortunately, it's, it's a little bit, it, it gets truncated. I cannot tell why, but um, currently it gets truncated. But if we want to uh, see it in uh, completely, we can just go to the edit mode. And we can see, OK, um, that's, that's regular BPMN XML. There's, there's no magic behind it. Actually, it's, it is only the, um, uh, the process part I left out um, the diagram part, which is the visual re representation. We could keep, we could leave that visual representation in there; it doesn't do any harm. But uh, for the sake of, uh, for the o overview of, of understanding this, I've removed it. So, in this XML, XML the, those um, activities are described. Each of the boxes that, it, that you have just seen in the uh, in the visualization is some kind of a um, section here. It's a so-called BPM and user, user task. And each of those um, user tasks are connected with the, such a activity that I just, just had on the list. So for example, let's go, go, go to, that, to the activity that I've called um, ask for classification. Um, this is a so-called custom form activity. Um, where I just show some form that, I've, that, that I have created on the wiki to the user to give them, to give them a, a chance to do the classification. And here comes the magic about it. Um, obviously, this activity needs to be assigned to some user. In my first example, you've seen that I chose a user from a list. Uh, I chose a user from a list. Um, so I, I need to, needed to explicitly tell which users should be assigned. But in many cases, we really don't want to do that. We want to derive that information from somewhere else like from, let's say, a semantic media wiki query. And I want to show you this, these properties. So each activity does, has, have, uh, does have properties that you can uh, provide with values. And those values, don't, they don't need to be uh, fixed values. They can be calculated dynamically. In this case, you can see it is just a, um, a parser function, basically saying um, check the current, current page's um, semantic properties, check if there is a property called responsible, and if so, use that responsible value as an assigned user. If not, we'd have a fallback, we could just call it the boss, but it could also be the case, so um, there's another user, a fallback user. But this basically dynamically calculates the assigned user based on where you start the workflow. It will be different on different pages. Um, there are other examples of that. So for example, there is, you can see there is a, a so-called due date. And obviously we want to, I don't want to hard code a due date. It doesn't make sense, but I want to have a due date relat relative from when the, um, when the, um, the um, the workflow starts. So I'm just using the parser function time here um, to calculate this kind of, um, of uh, information. So 
this particular um, task will show the user a form where the user can uh, select whether it is class A or class B. And then the workflow will continue. And the information that the user has entered will be passed on to the, to the follow-up activities for further processing. So for example, I need this information for um, doing an edit on a page or for sending a mail or for doing both. Just want to show another example about editing the, a page. Um, that is not as a send mail. So there's a, there's a task, it's called um, append wiki page because in this case I don't want to override a whole page, I just want to add a row or a line to the page. Um, and here I have really hard coded some, some page. I'm saying, okay, which page do I want to edit? I want to edit the page classification incidents. Um, uh, who should be the editor? In this case, I chose a system user. What do I want to edit or what do I want to add in this case? You see, that's just wiki text. It's just a, uh, it's an uh, asterisk um, indicating a, uh, an unordered list entry item, which um, I want to have a link in it with the full name, which um, I want to also access the information from the previous um, activity. So you remember there was this activity where I asked the user for classification. And this information can be obtained by just get, uh, using wiki text uh, syntax here. So you, you probably recognize that. That's a, that's a parameter um, syntax which you may, may, may also use in templates, three curly braces. And here you can see, okay, I'm, 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 I want to have the value from the ask for classification activity, which I showed before. And I want, which value do I want to have? I want to have the value from the field classification that the user provides in the form. So basically, I am compiling this line um, in here, and then I'm appending it to uh, the bottom of this page. So let's quickly check how this looks like in reality. Let's go to the, um, to the demo page. Uh, again, I'm going to start the workflow. I'm selecting, in this case, my demo workflow. You can see I can, I can provide some more information. I can give it a name. I can give it a, a, a description. Um, this can also be uh, internationalized so, or localized. You can use different uh, languages here based on the user language. And what we now see is a very sim simple initialization, initialization form. I don't need to choose the user as I did before. I only have the chance to give some, some, additional, um, some additional information. I just kept this here. Um, just want to show this to the user in the end. Entering here, please check. Now I'm starting it. And as you can see, this, um, without um, me assigning the user explicitly, this was assigned to me. Why was it assigned to me? Well, on this page, workflows demo one, um, there is, there's a line that says, who is responsible? User wiki sysop. And this is obviously not just a regular link. It is, um, it is a semantic annotation. So here, I'm, I was using responsible, colon, colon, and then giving my username. So by this kind of assignment, um, my workflow knows um, I just need to go back here. My workflow knows which user to assign for this task, which is me again. Now I can complete the action. You see, this, this kind of dialogue looks different. It's not just a text field, but it is um, a selection which I have also created on Wiki. This is nothing that I've did on the, on the server side or somewhere. I was able to do this using a Wiki page and a media Wiki name space. Let's say I'm doing the um, doing the class B here, and I'm submitting it. And okay, now the workflow is done. What has happened in the background? In the background, I, w I got a new mail. Uh, it just says it's CLSB, class B, on, con on demo one, and some information here. That's just a simple example. But also, it did an edit. So if I'm Going to another page here, classification incidents. That's the one that I hard coded in the in the workflow definition, which I just just showed you. 
you can see there's a line. Workflow was the one, the demo one was classified CLSB. And this is, um, this has just uh, been created. Um, let's see if we can see it on the history. Yep, so this was just my, my edit now, 1017. Um, okay, you can see that, that I, I missed some summary. This is a, I can add some summary as well if I need to, to do that, but it's, this is the edit that just, that which just was just made by the workflow engine. Okay, um, and yeah, last but not least, I would want to quickly show you how such a form does look like because I currently only show the workflow definition. I didn't show you the, the form. So there is a, another page on the wiki. It's called content classification request form. Um, I didn't show you that in particular on the, on the definition, but this is referenced. This page is referenced on the definition. And this is, um, yeah, here's the form. It's uh, being shown, but the more interesting part is actually the, how it looks like. Oh, it's, it's the uh, form editor. No, I wanted to show um, the edit source. So this is a super simple way of um, defining such forms. Um, on, for, for use in, the, um, in this workflow tool. It's just some kind of a, a JSON format where you, can, where you can specify the items that are shown to the user, like um, some, some text, like some, uh, in this case, drop-down menu, and you can give the values and so on. Obviously, this can be much more complex. You can add lots more fields. You can make fields dependent on each other. You can calculate fields, um, whatever you need to do here can be done. This is a super simple example, but this is roughly how it looks like, how you can create such custom forms if you don't, if you're not able to use um, any of the activities that are available um, from the extensions anyways. And also I want to show you that um, I need to wire up a trigger. Um, I just had the triggers on the, um, on the slides. So there's another page, it's called Workflow Triggers, and you can see there's a demo workflow which I have wired, um, and yeah, again, I can, I can specify what the user sees here. Um, I can tell which workflow to start. I can, um, I can give some start conditions, uh, start data, for example, and I can limit this to various things, like in this case, for, to, the name, to various namespaces um, to be shown, and so on, and obviously I can, yeah, I can create um, other triggers as well, just as I said, um, 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 event-based event, event -based triggers like on edit, on page creation, or manual, which are available here. So I can customize when, such a, when and how such a workflow um, starts. Okay, um, so that's it mainly for the demo of the, of the customized workflow. So to, to finish up this talk. So this is more or less the, the current state of what we have, um, and, but where do we want to go? One thing is already on the roadmap that is the visual editing of the uh, workflow definitions. So when I showed you that XML, um, this is difficult, right? Reading, reading and writing that XML is pretty difficult. But the good news is there are good, uh, there are good tools around. I think a couple of other extensions also use this library. It's called BPMNIO, which uh, provides, us, provides us with a very nice editor for such um, diagrams. And uh, in the next version, there will be uh, a visual editor for the diagrams, so you can actually just drag and drop the activities. You can wire them using graphical tool. You can um, set the properties um, on, uh, directly on the editor. And obviously there are some other nice um, things that could, such a workflow could do. Um, so this is not, uh, not necessarily on the roadmap, but it's more like ideas that we have. Like um, it would be nice if we had additional activities. I think we have covered, um, we, have, we have a good coverage already with the edit page and stuff, but there's obviously things that could be done as well. Like it would be great if you could trigger some outside um, uh, system by calling a web service, for example, some webhook uh, mechanism, or by um, reading or writing um, external databases, 
maybe creating PDF files or other um, documents and sending them or placing them in somewhere in the file system, whatever may be required by such a workflow. Um, also, it would be nice to have um, additional triggers. Um, I think the most common ones are already there, but um, sometimes it would be, would be great to have some external tool triggering this, triggering such a workflow. And um, one thing is maybe uh, currently, currently the workflow is pretty tightly bound to a wiki page. So a workflow does run on a wiki page. It operates in context of the wiki page. It allows access to the properties of that uh, wiki page to the activities. But um, there may be cases actually where, um, where such a workflow should run without a page context um, to, um, yeah, let, let's say, uh, do arbitrary stuff that, is, that we may, might have not have thought of yet. <coughs> yeah, well, um, so that's it for the uh, presentation. Now, if you've got any questions, please. Thanks, Robert. I, oh, Alexander has a question. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, thanks for presenting this. This is really, I think, an awesome piece of uh, extension to, to MediaWiki. So um, did I get this right? At the moment, you have a dedicated version for BlueSpice with some additional features that requires BlueSpice ecosystem, like the timer trigger. But this extension itself is independent of BlueSpice. It is, in, it is completely independent of BlueSpice, and we don't have a dedicated version, but we have extensions in the BlueSpice environment that integrate into that one. Yeah. That just adds additional um, activities or triggers, yeah. um, and we provide two additional workflow definitions by default from our connector extensions, but it's really just adding stuff. This is not, not a fork or anything else. It's no parallel yeah. development. It's this is the main thing. No, I'm asking because I think there are so many use cases by others. Uh, I would immediately think for our use case, I would create something like webhooks. Yep. So if this is open and uh, the whole system is uh, open to receive um, also yes. contributions from the community, I think this is really a, a big blocker and a, a major thing that uh, can help lots of people doing yep. some specific uh, micro extensions at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's a smart solution. I really like it, and um, I'm, I'm also looking forward to contribute something here. That's super. Thanks. Glad to awesome. hear that. Yeah, please. Um, so if, if you have anything to contribute or you need something, we can talk about that. So like webhooks, doing a web request, that's totally uh, something that I would love to see in there. No problem. Yeah, thank you. I, I totally <laughs> agree. Uh, my question is, um, I have very briefly looked at your forms extension. You mentioned that it's a, it's a dependency. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really get it up to now. Is it is it comparable to page forms? Is it your own version for the, what page forms does? Or, or? Uh, it is similar. It is similar. We have created it exclusively to um, allow um, creative creating forms uh, with JSON. Uh, configuration, just as you saw, because page forms, you know, page forms is basically wiki text. You have those, um, you have those input type uh, parser functions, stuff, stuff like that. And we felt like we would want to have some more uh, structured way to do that by doing, using JSON, and especially we we, we, we wanted to um, to use all the stuff that the you know, OJS UI framework offers us, like you can have booklet layouts and. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the various pickers, like for example, having a user picker, having a page picker, category picker, stuff like that. Um, these are lots of things that we want, would want to uh, use there. And we felt like it was more straightforward to, um, to define this in such a JSON way and actually just use OJS, which is already there, than to, let's say, use page forms in the, those dialogues, which would be more difficult to do for us. Um, the forms extension itself, by the way, is standalone. It can be used um, without uh, <coughs> the workflows. It allows you to define uh, forms. There's also a form editor, which um, yeah is already there, but may uh, may need some some love. Let's say that, <laughs> um, and, it, and it's also feasible to uh, it's, it's it's capable of doing some things very similar to um, to page forms, like editing templates on a page can be done with that. 
But in addition, you can also send out mails, for example. Um, yeah, that's, that's also a puzzle. Thank you. Do we have online questions? In the meantime, I'll... Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Well, first of all, thank you so much. This is a wonderful new extension, um, and I really enjoyed this demo. Uh, but I was wondering, so this is editing the BPMN? Is that what it is? Yes, BPMN.io. Uh -huh. And um, oh, is the only way to edit it right now to edit raw BPMN? So at the moment, um, you need to edit the XML directly. Yes, mm -hmm. you, but you, theoretically, you can go to BPMNIO website, mm -hmm. model your workflow, export it, and just save it to the wiki. Yeah. You, will, you will still need to do some modifications because the um, various activities need to have a, a certain type, and they need to have certain properties, which you cannot set on the, on the official page, right? Oh, OK. Um, so you will need, need to do some, some changes. OK. Um, but in an upcoming version, this will not be required anymore because we will integrate the editor directly into the extension. Oh, wonderful. So you will just go to a workflow definition page, you click edit, you will get the BPM editor, drag your stuff, double click it, get an, get a, an editor form where you can select the properties of this particular activity and this mm -hmm. will be much easier to use then. Yeah, absolutely. But for the time being, yes, it's, it's just XML. No worries. I'm super happy to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Um, please check out the tutorial that I've linked. I, I will. I will share the um, the uh, slides anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's a comprehensive tutorial. Absolutely. We'll do. Thank you. Thanks, Jeffrey. Some <coughs> questions in, uh, in this area. Yeah, thank you. So you, you showed some effects of the, uh, of the workflows in terms of automatic editing for the, uh, for the wiki. Uh, I was just wondering, to what extent is uh, information security an issue here? Um, in terms of, I don't, I'm not as exactly sure what the effects of the workflow could be, but could this introduce some kind of an attack vector for a malicious user <coughs> well, of your wiki? Um, an attack vector, well, Hard to say. <laughs> so the workflow definitions obviously need to, be, need to be crafted by somebody. They are in a restricted namespace. They are located in a MediaWiki namespace, so you need spe uh, special um, permissions to do that. Um, as, any, uh, as always, when, when some admin does something, you need to rely on what the, the admin does. If the admin screws up stuff, um, obviously those activities can do various things. Yeah, you could send, send out mails to external services. That's totally possible, yes. But it is secured in the same way as you would uh, expect it for other administrative parts. Yeah. No. Um, you also mentioned before your uh, uh, extension that replaced the flag refs uh, content system. Content stabilization, yes. How how would that, did you also look into the approved refs extension because it looks quite similar? Can yeah, you and what is the difference? Yes, I, I did. I also was in an exchange with um, Jaron on that topic. Um, well, uh, the main so why did we do this uh, at all? Um, the Wikimedia Foundation decided um, around the release of one thirty nine to change the flag dress extension in a way that rendered it um, unusable for us. We were mainly using it because of the uh, possibilities to stabilize content. And so not just saying this revision is, um, is approved, but also um, to cover images and templates. So um, before RHEL 139, flag dress could do that. So you could say, okay, this version is reviewed but it's not just the version, but it will also, um, it will also uh, record the versions of the pictures, the versions of um, uh, the templates that are used, and it will all stabilize this together. So even if a, if, a, if a template changes, this will not be reflected on the page. And this functionality was removed by the Wikimedia Foundation in RHEL 139 because they said they're not using it anymore, so they removed it. Um, we thought about actually putting that into approved refs, 
um, but in the end we decided against it. Um, so yeah, that's that's the situation currently. So content civilization is our drop-in replacement for flag drafts as it was before Rel 139. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. No online uh, questions? No? no. Okay, well, this was a very interesting talk. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs>